welcome to worship on Sunday, September 22nd, 2024. Special welcome to all visitors. Um, a few announcements today. Today is the last day that we are sharing our worship on our phone live streaming platform. This is a platform we've used for the past four years to allow people to dial a toll-free number and listen to each Sunday's worship. Uh, this service was used by a number of people during the pandemic, but since then the numbers of people using it have dropped significantly. Plus the cost of the service has risen substantially. So this only affects the phone-in version. We will still be sharing the weekly video of worship just as before on our website and YouTube channel. Today we celebrate the holy baptism of Wesley Thomas Farrell. Welcome to all visitors who've joined us uh, for the celebration. Uh, please know that all are welcome to the table of communion. Uh, and I'll explain how we distribute communion when we get to that point. Today is the last day to submit a card for the 90th birthday shower of Pat Duran. There's a basket out in the narthex for that. Dwelling in the Word continues this and every Tuesday. If you missed last week's session, that's just fine. Uh, come on out this week, Tuesday from 6.30 to 7.30. Our annual blessing of the animals service will be held Saturday, October 5th at 10 a.m. in our grove. Uh, all properly leashed or caged animals are welcome. Hope to see you there. Uh, I announced this last week, but in case you missed it, uh, we received an invitation to join Christ Lutheran Church in Stone Church for their 250th anniversary celebration. They will be celebrating with a special worship service and catered meal on Sunday, October 27th. At our council meeting uh, recently, Congregation Council decided that because this is such a milestone in the life of our siblings at Stone Church that we would cancel our worship that day and join them. So on October 27th, don't come here for worship. Instead, plan to join us at Stone Church for their 10 a.m. worship service. Uh, we'll have some more info and details to share as it gets closer. And one detail I can share now is that our own Tyler flight is scheduled to be organist that day. Um, a small framed item was found in the grove last night after our uh, uh, Faith by Firelight. If, you, if that's yours or you know who it belongs to, please see Connie Itterly about that. If there are no other announcements, yes, Mark. Good morning. If you'll indulge me, please allow me to do a little quick public service announcement concerning volunteerism. And what I'm most specifically referencing is the need for volunteers to help at two upcoming events, most specifically the Jacktown event where we help man the kitchen on October 19th and 20th, and also the ongoing need for people to help with Prince of Peace treasures. And the reason I bring this up is that our volunteerism, whereby we help at these uh, events, allows for generation of funds for the church. So if you would so prayerfully consider helping out and helping it allows for volunteerism again to make money for the church but at the same time allows for fellowship so please prayerfully consider and if you're interested there are sign up sheets in the narthex okay. thank you mark there are no other announcements i neglected to make then the time has come for worship let us quiet our hearts and our voices for the prelude
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in the time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the young and young at heart to come forward for story time. You can come up if you want, sure. Sure. Well, come on, sure. Great. Come on. All right, I got a couple questions for you all up here. Which one of you is the tallest? I'm going to be nine. No, I'm not. Well, let's find out. Like, who, if whoever thinks they're tallest, let's uh, let's get up and see who's tallest. Who's tallest? So come over, over here. Let's see. Well, not oldest, but tallest. Who's the tallest? Hmm. Okay. All right. So, okay, we got a tie there. Okay, which one is the shortest? Which one is the shortest? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Who's the shortest? Maybe over there? Okay. Your brother? Okay. Uh, now let's find out who's the oldest. Who's the oldest? How old are you? Ten? All right, so it's you. Who's the youngest? How old are you? Six and a half. Anybody younger than six and a half? Okay, you're the youngest. Who has the biggest shoes? So that's five? Okay. Yeah, those are big. Yeah, those are Crocs. Yeah, but those are Crocs. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the longest hair? Uh, uh, okay. you, oh, you got, oh, yeah, yep. There's the longest hair. Now, now, which of you is the best? Which of you is the greatest? The best? Mmm, that's a tougher one, isn't it? Well, I can make different, well, I can, I'm best at doing things, like... You're best at certain things, sure, but who's yeah. the best of all? Um, yeah, okay. Well, let's listen to today's story. Well, Jesus and his disciples were walking to a place called Capernaum, and the disciples were arguing about something on the way. Capernaum is a town in, uh, in Israel. Okay. Good question. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Okay, so these disciples were arguing about something on the way to Capernaum. And when, when, when Je whenever Jesus came close to them, you know what they did? They stopped arguing. They thought he wouldn't know that they were doing it. So when they got to Capernaum, Jesus asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they didn't say anything because they were embarrassed about it. Because you know what they were arguing about? Who was the best? They were arguing about which one of them was the greatest and the best. So Jesus sat down and he had the disciples gather around them and he told them, if you want to be the greatest, you have to be a servant and serve other people. And then he put his arm around a child who was nearby. Can I put my arm around you? Is that all right? Okay. He put his arm around a child nearby and he said to the disciples, when you welcome anyone, even a child, because of me, then you welcome me. And when you welcome me, you welcome the one who sent me. So thank you for, uh, for listening. Thank you for your help at figuring out who's, you know, who's the tallest and oldest and shortest and all that. Um, and yeah, which one of us is the best? None of us are the best. I heard somebody say Jesus over there, and I think that's, that's a good answer. You said God? That's also a good answer, yeah. I think it was baby Wesley who said Jesus. A oh, baby Wesley said Jesus. Well, then good for him. All right. Let's bow our heads for a prayer. Please repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Help us to not argue with each other. But remember that Jesus loves us all the same. Amen. Okay, thanks. Go back to your seats. A reading from Jeremiah. 
Today's reading tells of the suffering of the prophet Jeremiah, who announced God's word to, Ju to Judah, but was met with the intense opposition and persecution. Jeremiah continues to trust in God in the midst of his suffering. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew, but you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruits. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord, the hosts who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them. For you, I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name, in your might. Defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those of you have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice. Praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. A reading from James. The wisdom God gives unites our hearts and minds. Instead of living to satisfy our own wants and desires, we manifest the wisdom in peace, gentleness, mercy, and impartiality towards others. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For, th for where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will... All so be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure and, pr and peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is shown in peace for those who make. Those conflicts and, di and distributes among you, where do they come from? Do you do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something you cannot obtain, so you engage in distributes and, in distributes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Lord, to you, Lord. Jesus and the disciples went on through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Well, they came to Capernaum, and when Jesus was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and a servant to all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord.
Good morning, Wesley. I'm so glad you're here today. Today is a very special day for you. Today, in the waters of baptism, God proclaims that you are God's beloved child. Today, God begins a relationship with you. It's a relationship that will never, ever end. Today, God declares that he loves you, and that love is forever. And part of that relationship, Wesley, is that you can ask God for whatever you need. And Wesley, I'm pretty sure that you're really good at asking for what you need. The reason I think that is because you're a baby. So when you're hungry, you ask for food. When you're scared, you ask for help. When you need to be changed, you ask. Now at this point, for you, asking is probably crying and screaming, but hey, it works. I bet most of the time, you receive what you need from people who love you pretty quickly. And that's a good thing. As you grow up, Wesley, you'll find that the things you need to ask for are different. But there will still be things you need. But you might also find that it becomes harder to ask for what you need. I'll give you an example of that. Were you listening to that gospel story I just read? In that story, Jesus was talking to his disciples about his upcoming death. And they didn't understand what he was talking about. So they needed something. They needed him to explain it to them. But they didn't ask because they were afraid. They were afraid to ask Jesus. And because they didn't ask, they didn't get what they needed. Grown-ups are, often aren't as eager to ask for things they need as little children are. We're more hesitant. And hey, maybe that's why Jesus held a little child for them in the story. I don't know why we're more hesitant to ask. Maybe we think it will be embarrassing. Maybe we think we should be able to do everything ourselves. Maybe we don't want to look or feel vulnerable. Maybe we think we won't get what we need anyway. And maybe sometimes it's for the same reason as the disciples. Sometimes we're afraid. And we don't want to admit it. I wonder if you're afraid sometimes, Wesley. Maybe you're afraid of the dark. Maybe you're afraid of being alone. Maybe you're afraid of something else. Well, grown-ups get scared too. Even if we sometimes pretend we don't. And one of the things that grown-ups get scared of sometimes is the same thing the disciples were afraid of. Death. Jesus was talking about his own death and they were afraid to ask him what he meant. Many of us would rather not talk about death either. But death is real, Wesley. Death is something that happens to all of us. Every single one of us in this room will someday die. Even you. Now, I don't say that to disturb you or to disturb anyone else. I say it now because it's true and because it's important. We don't need to be disturbed by death or afraid of death. In fact, it's precisely in the face of death where the greatest hope of baptism is where the deepest sign of God's grace is. It's in the face of death that we can find true life. It's in the face of death that we find our most abundant life. Because that's where Jesus promises, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's where Jesus promises, today you will be with me in paradise. That's where Jesus promises, I am the resurrection and the life. That's where Jesus promises, do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. That's where Jesus promises, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Jesus was trying to tell the disciples about that abundant life, Wesley, and how it comes in the face of death. But they got scared and didn't understand Jesus. They didn't want to hear about it. So instead, they, they distracted themselves by arguing with one another about who was the best. Sometimes we distract ourselves too, but death is always here. It's always with us, staring right at us. I spoke once with someone who was afraid that her mother might die during a surgery. And people told her, don't worry, she'll get through it fine. But she knew they could be wrong. Death was there and she knew it. I spoke once with someone else who had recently lost her child to a miscarriage. People told her, don't worry, it just means there's something wrong with the pregnancy. But she knew that didn't matter. What mattered to her was the person she expected to meet after nine months was gone. Death was there and she knew it. Distracting ourselves and turning away from death doesn't help. But you know what does? Staring death right in the face and telling it, I am baptized and God is with me and God promises life. So remember today, Wesley, because thanks to your baptism, you don't need to be scared. Now, you'll still be scared sometimes, but you don't need to give in to those fears. Even the fear of death. You can stand up in the face of death and say, I know you're here. I know you're real, and I know that you frighten me, but I will stand and face you because I am baptized, 
and I trust the promises God made. Because here's what God promises you in your baptism today. God doesn't promise you a life without pain or suffering. God doesn't promise you a life without fear. What God does promise you in your baptism is eternal life, which means death is not the end of his love. On the day we die, God, Christ promises to take us in his arms forever. Christ will be there. And eternal life also means a special kind of life now. Christ promises to hold you in his arms each and every day of your life. Eternal life means true and abundant life now, a life with hope, a life with meaning, a life with love, a life filled with mercy and forgiveness and grace to lift you up every time you fall, every single time. That's what God promises you today, Wesley. And because of the promises of baptism, you can be bold and brave, faithful and hopeful no matter what. Because of baptism, you can live your life knowing that you are forgiven and you are loved. Today, Christ takes you in his arms, just as he took that little child in his arms in the gospel reading, and he says, you, Wesley, are my beloved child. Whatever happens, whether it's good or bad, Christ is holding you and giving you exactly what you need to get through each day. And Wesley, any time, any time at all that you need anything, you can ask God. God may not always give you everything you ask for. As grown-ups, we've all learned that. But God will give you what you need every single time. Remember your baptism. Keep on asking God. Today is all about God's love for you. Embrace that love. Trust in that love. And keep on asking. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You ready for this? I think you're ready. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Who presents Wesley for baptism? We can say that together. Julie and Matthew. No, no, top. We present. We present Wesley Thomas for baptism. Julie and Matthew, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your son baptized into Christ? As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people. Bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Wesley grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors, Godparents, do you promise to nurture Wesley in the Christian faith as you're empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? We do. 
people of God, do you promise to support Wesley and pray for him in his new life in Christ? I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. To the parents and sponsors, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? And along with the whole congregation, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Drawn together in power of the Holy Spirit, we pray in love for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. God of wisdom, unite the hearts and minds of all our brothers and sisters in Christ at St. Paul's in Tannersville with us. Guide their pastor, Woody Santiago, and our pastor, Michael Schultes, as they send us out in servanthood to you. O God of wisdom, draw near to us. Almighty God, you call us to peace in all we do. Give us courage to be respectful and understanding with those who do not agree with us. Show us how to look for common ground to unite the world you love. Let our words be filled with compassion, not cruelty. Give leaders discernment to bridge the differences that divide us. O oh God of wisdom, draw near to us. God of compassion, in the midst of suffering body, mind, and spirit, comfort all those who cry out, including, our, including all those on our prayer list. O oh God of wisdom, Draw near to us. Creator God, the growing season is almost over and harvest will begin soon. We thank you and praise you for all our bounty from the earth. Keep teaching us to be stewards of what you have given us and what we should share to sustain all people. O oh God of wisdom. Draw near to us. Loving God, bless Kay Parsons, McKenna Baker, Arlene Miller, Patricia Durham, Duran, Duran, excuse me, Stacy Hawk and Jaden Garris this week as they celebrate their birthdays. Like the little children that come to Jesus, let them also welcome Jesus in their lives. O oh God of wisdom, draw near to us. Eternal God, we remember all the saints who have gone before us with a never ending faith in you. We are thankful for their years of service to you. O oh God of wisdom, draw near to us. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, Holy Father, in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay, you can bring him up. Shell. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. Wesley Thomas, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Hold that and keep him right here. Let us pray. 
We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Wesley with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Read that. You can dip your thumb in that. Make the sign of the cross on his forehead. Wesley, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Go ahead. Let your, soul, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Please turn and face the congregation. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ, into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let us welcome our newest member, Wesley Thomas Farrell. Okay. Please be seated for the offering. Okay, you can blow that out. And this is for you to keep. Yep.
Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Amen. God, our bread of life, our table, and our food. You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast, and we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want, and by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the table of communion. Please come forward as the ushers direct you. You can come down the center aisle, take an empty cup, and those on that side will go this way, those on that side will go this way. You receive the bread and eat it, and then your cup will be filled with wine, and you can drink that and place the empty cup on uh, the, uh, the, the corners there as you return to your pews. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come.
you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Jesus.